Welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Schoolboy here back with another video. Tonight we are talking about Real Housewives of Potomac Season 8, Episode 7, Don't Rock the Boat. <sighs> it's another boring episode. I decided to go ahead and record this video and drop it tonight. Tomorrow I will be live doing, um, we will be live tomorrow at uh, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern. We'll be talking about Married to Medicine tomorrow night. But I wanted to go ahead and get this video out of the way tonight so I had to do it tomorrow and I could just go live with y'all tomorrow and everything be uh, hunky dory on that end. So we are talking about Potomac. If you have not uh, checked out this past week's episode of Hotline Bling Chat Room, episode five, um, which is the ugly sweater um, episode. Um, and it was a whole key. It was fun. Make sure y'all get over to Chef Don Don's channel. Y'all like the video. Y'all subscribe to his channel. And y'all come up this week. This episode will be, we will be in our, um, what's that? <laughs> Christmas uh, pajamas. We'll be doing that in our PJs tomorrow. So make sure, I mean, this week. So make sure y'all tune in for that. So make sure y'all uh, subscribe, hit the like button, you know, all that good stuff. Make sure all your notifications on because YouTube be tripping. So when the episodes drop at uh, 10, 15 Eastern on Fridays, y'all are a part of it. Also, just to let you know, School of Love casting has been extended. Um, this is the new my new web reality LGBTQIA plus dating series. We will be, I'll be dating women ages of 30 to 45. And I'll be, you know, trying to find some love, you know. As well, make sure that if you would like to have your Black-owned business featured on the show, you can always email us at admin at tcddproductions.com. That will go directly over to the production team and they will get back to you on packaging and everything like that. Um, and then y'all can get your advertisement on your hotline bling and or school of love. Uh, just know school of love will be premiering in the spring of next year. So, you know, it's going to be something good. Y'all get into it and support your boy finding love, you know? Okay. So we didn't got through all of the, good things uh which is all of the housekeeping that normally we got to get through also make sure y'all follow me on twitter school underscore boy on instagram at school underscore boy underscore 2021 if you like to donate to the channel you can always donate via cash app or Vimbo that is rolling across the screen just as we always say over here everything on my channel is spoken is allegedly and in my opinion you ain't gotta agree but damn it we ain't gotta fall out over it either uh so we can keep it copacetic so we are opening the episode where we left off. Robin is crying in the black truck, but everyone ganging up on her. And I mean, for me, Robin's tears don't move me. I don't care. At this point, Robin, you sat up there and you you talked about uh, Karen and Ray's tax issues. You played like you were a fake pizza man and went over that lady house. You um, have also co-signed Giselle's foolery with, with uh, that the Chris situation with Candace, it has been time after time after time that you have done stuff to other people and maliciously maligned yourself. So at this point, everybody ain't got too many feelings for you and don't really care what's going on with you, Candace. Personally, we just all don't give a damn. And that's just kind of where we are all at. Robin uh, said that people's husbands are talking ish and they flashed to Chris on an interview saying, that Robin was in on it with Giselle wanting to take him down. And at the end of the day, y'all can't. Robin, you can't be that stupid to think that that man should not have any feelings towards you. When you at one point said Giselle was stretching the truth and was lying. And that's not how it really went down. So then you turn it 100 percent turn coding and saying that co-signing and in going along with. Giselle's narrative that we all know is not true. Then you've also sat up here on y'all's uh, reasonably shady podcast and continue to bully back and forth with Candace. But you keep saying that everybody's jumping you and Candace is bullying you when you've done it back and forth on reasonably shady with your uh, with uh, with Giselle's ass. 
So it's kind of like you pinky in the brain and you just run up behind anything that Giselle says because Giselle is brain and you're pinky and you just don't think. And I, honestly, you just getting back the karma that you have done to other people. So at this point in time, I don't feel bad for you at all. I just, I'm going to keep it above 50. Candace says she's fine. She's letting it, you know, uh, Robin says they want to see her downfall. No one is her friend. And I'm like, girl, don't nobody care about you and Juan and, and like that. It's really not that deep. Candace says, um, uh, fine, she's letting it go. And her and Robin aren't uh, necessarily friends. Uh, they're not friends at all. Um, after everything that's happened, kind of like there ain't no friendship left. And to be honest, let's be said, let's keep it a buck fifty. Robin will not be friends until she pulls her head out of Giselle's behind, and they're able to be friends. She's able to be friends with Candace on her own merit and taking Giselle's feelings out of the situation, and it just be her and Candace mending that. Until that actually happens, ain't nothing gonna happen to that, and that friendship ain't gonna go nowhere. They get to chicken ish bingo, and the chicken takes uh ish and decides on uh, what number they call next and bingo. I've never heard of this. No, I haven't visited Austin, but I've been lived in Texas for almost a decade now, and this sounds like some country ass ish that I would never even think to even be trying to do. Um, and I know it was funky as hell in that bar with them damn chicken shitting and also them trying to drink. I couldn't have did it personally. Robin is still crying and saying her family was hurt by the allegations that were brought up on Juan. But it's like, again, girl, you act like Candace's family wasn't hurt. And her stepchildren were not hurt by the things that Giselle said. It's a catch-22, sweetie. All sides was have been hurt by things that have been said. Giselle has uh, denied people's paternity of their children saying uh they fathers wasn't they fathers when it came down to monique said monique was cheating with her trainer and uh and uh chris and monique's son wasn't his uh giselle has sat up here and lied on chris she has also believed that mess that that girl was running around here on the internet uh saying that started over on tasha k's channel then went to that bravo leader lady online then from the bravo leader lady it went on down uh uh to another blogger kamisha reviews who did an interview with the girl then the girl backpedaled and pussy pop on kamisha reviews thing talking saying that oh well now all of a sudden um well she just lied and said that it really still did happen when all of the paperwork was debunked by chef don don i even looked at the paperwork people on twitter looked at the paperwork and it just all is fraudulent again you and Giselle have went around and successfully sat up here and railroaded marriage after marriage after marriage after marriage. And y'all didn't give a fuck about what y'all was doing when y'all was doing it. So at this point in time, I have no sympathy for Giselle or Robin. And I'm sorry. And if y'all don't like the fact that I don't have sympathy for them two birds, oh, well, I really don't care. Um. Meanwhile, Ashley is picking up chickens and stuff. And I just... All I can think about was Salmonella. Eventually, Giselle goes outside to check on Robin, and Mia stayed out there staring, acting like she was going to do something to ease, you know, ease the ease Robin's angst. And I'm just like, girl, whatever. Uh, Giselle says she didn't want to sit at the table with Candace saying, fuck you, bitch. And I'm just like, Candace probably feel the same way about you. Fuck you too, bitch. Because you are just as gutter and just as nasty and just as trifling. And those that know you from Baltimore, Maryland, and know how you got down at Empowerment Temple and the many a times that you allegedly was out here uh, fighting women over Jamal Bryant in the church, ma'am, you need to have several seats too because your past is not all that squeaky clean either. But again, you want to front for the cameras? Go ahead, Giselle. I can't stand you for that. Candace says, uh, Like Giselle lied on Chris and feels like she had nothing. 
she ain't do anything to me giselle has lied on chris and she feels like she ain't done nothing candace says why should she be friends with someone who thinks giselle, what giselle did is okay and i totally understand candace's point i wouldn't want to be friends with someone who agrees with that and when if you can't as friends hold each other accountable that's a problem candace is still crying at the table with the uh the triangle uh tissues and i'm just kind of over candace with the tissues too but I understand because it's the situation is both triggering for both parties. But for real, I really do want to say, you know what? F you, uh, 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 Robin, because your tears don't move me. Candace is still crying at the table and Wendy is rubbing her back, comforting, comforting her. No Neck says Candace can't think on her own without Wendy. And I'm like, No Neck, did anybody ask you anything? No, we did not ask you a damn thing. Matter of fact, I don't even know why you're still here. Okay. Because that voodoo hoodoo uh, storyline that you're trying to have and then faking about your age, we don't know if you're 35 or 45, taking champagne with prenatals and trying to still act like you're trying to get pregnant. It's just, I can't. Candace says she's not uh, talking on her legal matter. And she says, Robin is just mad. She said, I would never speak on my husband's legal issues. And that's really all it is. You spoke on your husband's legal issues on that couch with Andy, and that was a choice. You didn't have to speak on that. You could have kept it mums the word. And you could have said, you know what, I'm not at the liberty to speak on that, Andy. He would have moved on. You chose to try to, I guess, gain sympathy and payola from the audience, and it really didn't work that way. If anything, you just put your damn foot in your mouth, if you ask me. Kara says, Candace just said the truth of what they were all thinking in regards to the situation. Karen and her mole are absolutely correct. Karen convinces them to go back and have a good time. Mia, Giselle, and Robin are, uh, Mia and Giselle are taking Robin back to the hotel. Um, when, uh, no neck goes back inside. Um, and Wendy got a chicken bought from a man in the bar. And she says if she wins, she'll split the money with him. Karen is trying to make Candace laugh doing the chicken dance. Karen says she's getting an allergic reaction to the chicken. She almost damn near dry heaving all in there. Karen says it was a nightmare and Mia and Giselle was a nightmare Mia and, to Mia and Giselle. And Giselle says she's uh, ready to defend her against Candace. And I'm just like, Giselle, go to hell swiftly because my whole thing is this. You still sat up here and lied on that man. This season now is he lured you into a room and all this shit. Giselle, I'm going to tell you something. That's why you over there with that sugar foot, a.k.a. trade Jason, because there ain't no way he's knocking anything in your box loose. Anytime you are still sitting up here praying and being miserable and disgusting and still talking down on people's relationships and marriages, you can't be happy. You are still a miserable, miserable ass woman. Okay. I do eat miserable. Karen's brother calls and sings happy birthday to Karen. Candace speaks to Chris about what happened and explains to him how everything just came out that she's been holding in. Um, and he basically told her, I mean, if it came out, it came out. You had to say what you had to say. Ain't no big deal. Brush it off. Just try to have a good time. Giselle runs up to Karen's room and with candy and champagne cheap ass shit she didn't got down at the um at at the inside you know when the hotel's got the little concession area and all that she didn't really spend no damn money because if you really gave a damn about your friendship with karen you would have came with karen with a true gift giselle is a phony and a fraud and i can't do it giselle says karen doesn't want to celebrate with them at all due to last year in miami being a disaster Giselle claims that she cannot move forward with Candace uh, uh, for her, for Karen. Gis Giselle doesn't like the colorist comment being called to Karen, uh, being called about her last year at the reunion. And Giselle claims she has gotten death threats um, for the things Candace has said. And you act like Candace has not probably received death threats on your behalf, too. Again, I'm going to say this. What's very weird about reality TV is these fans and these fans and these weird ass people. And it's even it's even YouTubers and content creators and even bloggers. It's very sick how y'all get obsessed with some of these damn people to the point that y'all will get on the Internet and argue, cuss and fight for hours and hours and hours. 
y'all will send death threats on behalf of these people. It's very disgusting. And I really want y'all to go out and get some air in 2024 and go out and, and see some things in the world and not sit up here behind computer screens being keyboard Karens and threatening people because it's absolutely disgusting. I'm just going to be honest with the whole thing. I can't stand it. And that's why a lot of times some people don't like to tweet about certain shows because of the stands and the fans of the group. So you're not going to tell me that Robin and Giselle's people have not threatened Candace and Candace people haven't threatened them and vice versa. Y'all can't control shit that these damn people do on the internet. And at the end of the day, Giselle, you act like that lady probably wasn't threatened too. Please save me the white woman tears. Cause then I, and they don't work over here. Mia's on FaceTime with Gordon and he says the attorney let him know he has an update on them suing their ex-business partners. She said basically she believes in leaving it alone and I still say that's some red flags. If you, why would you? I'm going to just say this. I would be like Gordon. If somebody, if, if I have a half a million dollars that's owed to me, I'm going to go get my damn money. Ain't no way I'm not going to go sue them unless there is some things in there that's funny about that paperwork or funny about that situation that you don't want to be discovered because as you go into discovery to sue someone, everything becomes open. All business emails, bank accounts, anything that has evidence to prove what you're trying to prove will be in discovery. So it sounds a little funny. Something is going on over there. Can't, everyone wishes Karen happy birthday in their confessionals. Karen says she's not getting in no kayak because she can't swim. And I'm like, girl, I'm with you. I wouldn't be getting in no kayak. And then when they said them waters got snakes in it, uh, no ma'am, no Pam. They all have to sign a waiver to do this. And, you know, everybody signs the waiver. Uh, Ashley thought Karen would have thought since Karen is so active and all the pictures that she takes on Instagram with her snatched body, she would have been willing to do this kayaking. And again, Ashley, worst trip plan ever. And you didn't read the room. You should have asked what the birthday person wanted to do on their damn birthday instead of doing some some shit that you want to do because this truly ain't no shit Karen would ever want to do anyway. Karen and Candace are still sitting on the dock together and she says yesterday was a lot and Robin tells Giselle she had to tell Juan what was going on. Um, And I'm just going to say again, this is another boring, boring episode. I think I checked out a lot in and out. So if I miss some other part in this review, forgive me, don't charge it to my heart. But I was bored and I would rather drink my tequila instead. Candace tells Karen she didn't know uh, she was going to be out of sorts emotionally. Robin says to Giselle that she has been bullying her online and they haven't been doing that on like they haven't been doing that on her podcast back and forth. And I'm just like, y'all been doing that on y'all's podcast back and forth. And y'all been doing all of this stuff like on Reasonably Shady. Like y'all ain't sitting up there talking shit about Candace, vice versa. So at the end of the day, can't nobody bully two grown, two set, uh, three different grown people that are going back and forth with each other online. Y'all just mad because Candace probably eats y'all up be better than y'all eat her up on that dry ass podcast. And I don't give a damn. Y'all kiss my ass in my comment section. Y'all gonna tell me about how many streams they got. Who gives a fuck how many streams they got? Okay? This shit's still dry and boring. And people nine times out of ten listen to their podcast to get tea for their blogs. They ain't listen to it because the shit is nowhere remotely interesting. So, um... And then my whole thing is also you two, you two whores were over there believing a woman who was clearly lying on Chris about having some affair. And then on top of that, Giselle, yo, yo punk ass was over there lying on Chris. It's just disgusting. They're all kayaking around the water, coming back to the dock to get wine poured in their mouth by Karen. Karen mentions she's buying a piece of her grandmother's land in Surrey, which is the old plantation and everything, which I think is really dope. Um, to do that. She says she's going to turn it into resort to build generational wealth, which I think is awesome. Um, Robin went to call Juan and she's, uh, she says financially things are the same and Juan was paid 15 months up from his contract. So they knew they was going to fire him anyway, I guess. 
And so they paid him the 15 months left in his contract that he was going to get, which, I mean, getting a year and a couple of months of your salary paid up ain't much. But, and I mean, you better be pinching pennies off of that. Robin hopes that he gets a job soon. And we still know that it is December 17, 2023, and the nigga still ain't got a job. So we know that he never got a job. Robin brings up Karen and Candace, and Wendy jumped on her, and she got fired, and that he got fired because she spoke on his lawsuit. He says, why are you feeding into this? He refuses to listen to it anymore. He screams for her to stop feeding into it. Why is she getting emotional? It's their life. Uh, our life, no one else's, and he says he can't listen to it anymore and hangs up the phone on Robin. At the end of the day, Robin does care about what people think. Juan don't give a fuck about what these hoes think, but she does care about what these people think, and at the end of the day, she can't answer and sh for the things that Juan has done, nor can she give an, a real educated answer because the answers that he's giving her is bullshit, and so if she's trying to translate translate his bullshit lies into something that makes sense and at the end of the day robin just stop trying because if we gotta be a hundred percent honest you're wasting your time you're trying to make this be more than what you need it to be and you're trying to push this you care more about what's going on than he does he does not care he don't give a damn. Ron Juan has not looked like he's cared about being unemployed. He don't look like he care about them cameras. And he damn sure don't give a shit about this. Juan, remember season, seasons back, I think that was season one or two. Juan was like, he didn't give a fuck about them cameras. He didn't even want to do this shit. None of that. And, and, and I just really think that Juan is not going to change anything that Juan is doing. We need to stop trying to force finding out what happened that she didn't share on camera. Because no one cares. It's honestly a waste of time. And, 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 and if that is what she's comfortable with, I, if she like it, I love it. I don't give a damn. I'm going to just keep it above 50. So <laughs> that sums up another boring episode of Real Housewives with Tommy. This all I got ain't got no mo. Y'all make sure y'all check me out tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern, as we talk about Mary to Medicine. Okay. Tomorrow morning, when I wake up in the morning, I'll get in here and start doing my notes for Mary to Medicine and get into the things with that. Um, also, if you haven't checked out my review for Real Housewives of Miami, make sure you check that out. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Also, my Bell Collective uh, review is up as well. Um, ladies, if you would like to be casted for School of Love, that is still open till December 23rd. So y'all make sure y'all get those applications in. Y'all got literally less than a week, maybe two weeks, a week. So go ahead and get that information in. So y'all go ahead and do that. Also, if you would like to have your business uh, featured or promoted on Hotline Bling, or on uh, School of Love, make sure y'all email us at admin at tcddproductions.com. Okay. And again, y'all follow me on my social media at school underscore boy on Twitter, on Instagram, school underscore boy underscore 2021. And, um, I got TikTok and all that. Y'all can check that out in the uh, links in the description box. Also, make sure y'all go over there and check out last week's episode of Hotline Bling Chat Room. Um, it was a key. It was our ugly sweater edition. This week, we're going to be doing um, holiday PJs matching sets. So y'all get into it. Y'all make sure, uh, you know, y'all do that this week. Um, thank you for the love and support. Oh. And on the way out, let me go ahead and hit you with this trick. The Chef Don Don Productions presents School of a Love Honey. A new LGBTQ web reality series. In the big city of Dallas, Texas.
If you are interested in dating school boy, make sure you get those applications in right now. Just in time for school to be in session.